Hello my Soccer Universe to the Conference League and Europa League review. I should say Europa and Europa Conference, but you know, we'll, we'll start this video in the Conference League because my favorite team last got another win and it seems like they're the best team in the world, but they are hardly anything but that. Before we get into the games, I just want to point out this is the background that in this configuration I never had. I mean, the Real Sociedad jersey, I'm not sure if it's making its debut or not, but you know, it's not very often up there and yeah. The unpacking video there will be this jersey from this horrible team however it's a beautiful jersey so uh very uh proud to have augmented uh even for the europa league not so much for the conference league yet but you know there are not that many uh outstanding teams in there but you know we had some outstanding uh results but i want to start as i said in the conference league with my favorite team, uh, Lusk, who after Maccabi Tel Aviv had already beaten high, uh, high H, JK, uh, <laughs> Helsinki, 5-0. Uh, they knew if they get a win at Al Alaska, they are within the epsilon of qualifying. And to be honest, uh, after 20 minutes, Alashkert hit once the post. Lask seemed sluggish, as they have frequently been doing as of late, and decided, okay, maybe this is not the time. And also the atmosphere, you know, huge stay stadium. And, you know, I don't mind an empty stay stadium where I can hear, hear the players. What I really don't like is a near-empty stadium where there are a few spectators just yelling random things in there. And that, to me, that turned me off. In addition, the game was crap. So I decided, okay... Let's not watch Lusk. Uh, I have been so far in the Conference League, I have um, avoided the um, conf conference, meaning where, uh, you know, the kind of goal, goal show where they switch back and forth between games. They usually only pick four games for each slot, which I find a little bit lim limiting. It doesn't only this much better, but now that it's on Sky Sports, uh, yeah, I I'm a little bit annoyed by that, but you know, at least they picked four good games. Um, and yeah, Watch that because you will definitely more entertained than the other games were all Europa League games, uh, namely the Rapid game. It was Lazio and uh, there was a fourth one that we'll talk about later. In any case, a uh, good decision on my part. However, uh, the game took a really, really weird turn. Uh, as I said, uh, Alashkat had hit after a header the um, crossbar already once. Then uh, last kind of, you know, controlling, but, but, but it's, you know, without uh, moving forward, this was not proactive. It's just keeping the ball. Um, and then suddenly Monshine uh, is sent wide and he catches the ball just before the goal line. Back heals it onto a defender and the referee gives a penalty. But if you watch the review, although the defender goes like this into the, uh, <laughs> the tackle, he's hit on the head. And the Conference League doesn't have VAR, and I thought, oh man, uh, what a gift. But I also, I you know my theory that whenever there is a penalty given that was not just usually, or very often, the striker misses. And that's exactly what happened. Moonshine, although the keeper went the other direction, he puts it on the post. Now, uh, on one side, yeah. I don't want to say fair play, but I th I think I was kind of okay with this goal not uh, happening because it would just not have been fair. On the other side, when I think about Lask and what trouble they have uh, scoring, phew, then yeah, um, I think Alashkert hit once more the crossbar and then, uh, you know, kind of, kind, of, kind, of, kind of messy attack ball falls to Hong, who from outside of the box makes it 1-0. Second half, a whole lot better from Lusk, and uh, they should have scored earlier through Goiganger, who then gets the second goal in the 68th, and then Michael late in the 92nd, with a shot from far, far out, makes it 3-0. There were the more chances, and Lusk get overall deserved win, but especially the first half. I was happy that I did not watch this one, because this would have depressed me the entire evening, but you know, with both of these wins, Two more win. Uh, if they win the return legs, Lask and Maccabi, and they both had the away games, uh, both of them are, are already through, and then there's a final for uh, who will finish first. The outstanding result uh, of the entire evening has to be Bodo Glimt rolling over Roma. 6-1. And you think at first, what's happening? 
Well, um, if you just look at the lineup, and Mourinho said as much after the game, um, he did not want to play his first uh, 11 or his star players because on the artificial pitch uh, above the Arctic Circle, he didn't want to risk really uh, injury. So the lineup was really kind of weirdish. Roma, even with a completely new, uh, nice dark blue jerseys, a new fourth jersey jer- jer- for that match, they were taken to the sword. And... I knew the Bode is hard because Milan in the qualification round to last season's uh, Europa League, Milan had to play Bode and had a hard time beating them at home 3-2. They are playing a style similarly to maybe what Salzburg or whatever is doing, you know, pressing and, and unrelentingly. And that's what did Roma in. And um, yeah, the history of Roma. And I actually thought about there is a video in, in, in there. Almost any big Italian team has kind of a big flaw in Europe. And Roma's flaw is that if they lose, they lose big. They are prone to giving up a, low, a whole lot of goals. I actually, actually forgot that Flora came back 2-0 uh, down for, to Anorthosis to get the first points ever in a European group, group, group stage. But yeah. Going, going back to Bode and Roma uh, and uh, together with uh, Zoria winning at CSK, uh, Bode and Roma are still uh, up top, but I'm waiting for the for other return. Like, I think uh, Mourinho smells blood, but it will, <laughs> it could backfire big, 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 big time. Um, I think it's time to look at uh, the second slot where I actually did, um, they had Feyenoord against Union Berlin. Yeah, that was the other game, uh, which was a really exciting game. And Dutch teams again showing the dominance over German teams as Ajax did over Dortmund. The game was maybe, especially first of all, a little bit more even. There should have been a penalty given for Union Berlin. Uh, but Feyenoord takes down the lead in the 11th, doubles it after a horrible mistake by Knoche, make it 2 to nil. But Avonje then uh, can pull one back. And you really, really thought at that point that Union might be coming out to um, get another punch. But no, it did not really happen. Uh, it was actually Feyenoord who should have run away as winners. Sinistera seals the vic- victory and lay-, lay down. It could have gotten ugly for uh, Union for sure. Huge win for Pauk at Copenhagen. And if you have seen the audience, I mean, uh, those Danish fans they are rather scary to uh, slash very impressive. So uh, if you think the cold Scandinavians, no, 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 nothing. It was pretty impressive stuff. Uh, the game was heavily in, in, influenced by a red card in the ninth minute for uh, Copenhagen. That then um, Sitkli uh, and Zivkovic uh, can use for a 2-0 uh, lead for Pauk. However, Copenhagen fight back and get actually the 80th uh, goal back, but uh, it remains a win for Pauk, which is pretty huge uh, in terms of them advancing because they are now leading the table. Copenhagen is, is right, right behind them. And with Slovan uh, limping to a victory over the, the Red Imps, I think those two should be the ones that are advancing. And, you know, first place is nice because you avoid the playoff. And, uh, yeah, that's always something... Uh, to look out for. Uh, ran a little bit more work than needed over Mura, but get that one. And then the other big result, um, Vitesse l- winning over Spurs with a late goal by Wittek in the 78th, uh, which actually puts at this moment Ren and Vitesse ahead of Spurs. Sure, Spurs will recover from that, but it is not a gold look. And again, Spurs is doing something uh, wacky in the group stage. So, so, so these are the games that I want to talk about in the Conference League. Uh, so let's move over to, to the Europa League where we already had, had, had Wednesday. An absolutely nuts game. Spartak had a 2-0 lead in the 44th minute through Zobolev and Larsen. Uh, when Patson Ducker right after that, 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 that one uh, pulls a goal back and that started the Ducker show. Daka, of course, coming from Salzburg. He scores three more goals. 48, 54, 7, 79 to have a, what we call in the German speaking word, a pure hat trick because you score them in succession. No one scores in between in one half. That's a pure hat trick uh, for uh, those of you out there. Uh, to give a le- less than much needed win, a win uh, that was eluding them uh, so, so far. And so Bolev only pulls back so a 3 4 win. 
that sequence of goal was not the only one. <laughs> it was not, well, was not unique uh, in this case. Uh, because uh, Lyon had a, the exactly same goal sequence against Sparta Prague and also not down to to a minute, but the way it was in the first half of second half is almost eerie. Haraslin uh, gave Sparta Prague a 2 0 lead for the 9 90th when Toko come in the 42nd, pulls one back. I don't understand why Lyon actually played in red pants, but you know, so be it. Uh, and then Lyon ac actually pulled put under pressure. Awar uh, gets equals in 53rd. Paqueta with a great shot in the 67th just had come on. Um, Gives then Leon Law the lead, and they have a, a, a guy Sanchez and send off with the yellow red, but they come in 88th, seals more, 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 more the deal. Uh, and very late on, Karechi pulls one back. It was also a disallowed goal for offside, but you know, that was probably uh, an all right call. So that actually puts Leon really, really comfortable uh, in this group. Uh, Rangers finally get the win against Brøndby. A uh, huge game between PSV and Monaco and that I saw in the other conference that we had. Uh, where the feeling that, that I got that PSV was controlling the game most of the time but was a little bit too sloppy up front and maybe holding themselves too much back because there's the huge game coming uh, on Sunday and they have two days less rest against Ajax. So I think that played a big, big role in there. Um, and yeah, Obispo in the in defense was clearly the weak link for PSV uh, because Bo uh, a, a nice ball uh, from Enrique to Bo Bo Boadou, he completely misjudged and Boadou is clear on goal, uh, gives uh, Monaco the lead. Uh, then I think PSV mostly pushed Monaco back without having really the big chance. The, the equalizer was kind of a weird, weird one where Gag poaches the ball falls for him and he is uh, sl slamming it in. Um, and then I think if PSV would have gone a bit more for the juggler, they probably could, could, could have uh, gotten away with the win. But again, it's an obispo mistake where uh, then the op in the 88, 89th can score the winner for Monaco, which is a pretty, pretty big win for them and uh, puts PSV actually in a little bit of trouble. As I Obispo also should have been sent off and probably a penalty given to Monaco in the first half. So uh, overall probably the, the win for Monaco was um, deserved if I look at the sum of the parts. Sturm Graz fought really hard for one half. For once they were not outclassed. They really fought hard in the first, first, first half. Had even chances, maybe even a call for a penalty there. Hands, hands, but, 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 but you know. It was the elbow and was kind of close to but so I, I could call a suit. Um, but they might be aggrieved. I mean, Sociedad was the better team. We don't need to discuss that. Um, but they were, were aggrieved that um, before the goal by Isaac was scored, is there was a clear foul, but then a uh, Sturm player got the ball, advanced it, and then from that, so kind of a new phase of play happening. And then Isaac's weak shot gets a wicked deflection, but still the goalie, uh, Siebenhandel, should get it and it goes between his hands and legs into the goal gives them uh yeah gives also so that a win as i said they were a better, better, better team but sturm really really fought hard to get something out of this game maybe they, even with a man down lay, lay later on they actually fought and could have maybe gotten a goal but you know it's a third loss in the third game. Napoli takes a whole lot of time to uh, beat Le Lege, but once they broke it, uh, one good goal after the other. Uh, when Insigne, that was a great strike. Uh, Ozzy went from a very acute angle and then even Politano strike from far out. Three really, really, really nice, nice, nice goals, which actually put now Napoli and Leicester back in contention for the first bet. I mean, Lega is still up top, but uh, those two look now a whole lot uh, better. Frankfurt get a rare win over Olympiacos. Uh, it was penalty, penalty. <laughs> 26 and 30 they were literally behind each other this was one attacking move and then the other uh, the other one um and you had uh, some worry but you know frankfurt in the end prevail uh prevailed uh with a uh, toure scoring uh the go ahead goal just just before half half half, half time and then uh kamada uses a goalkeeping mistake 
to make it three three one all over Frankfurt now also ahead of ahead of the in this group Olympiakos just uh, behind so those two seem to be the uh, the class of the group as well uh, Lazio Marseille was another one that was in the early conference. Uh, which was a weird game in the sense that first, I think Marseille really uh, caused trouble to Lazio. However, in the second half, the longer the game went on, the more Lazio got going and uh, stifled Marseille. And it was a little bit unlucky that they didn't uh, get the win there. Um, what else do we have? Uh, Betis against Bayer Leverkusen. Uh, yeah. I think Betis was largely the dominant team there, took the lead, but then a deflected goal gives Leverkusen the lead and then Wirtz probably could, 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 could have won it late. Uh, it's still that those two teams are the ones that will probably advance from, from this group. It's a similar situation with the last group where, um, yeah, the problem is they play against each other, but Celtic and Ferenc Varos um, are, I think, a step below. Now, a big sign of life from Rapid, who have already been in the league, you know, showing signs of improvement, but really not there yet. That they beat Dinamo Zagreb deservedly is something I did not expect, and that's why they're the biggest improvers in the Conference League. Um, after five minutes, they had control of the game. In the ninth, Arasa just uh, wins a ball that most people would have uh, pulled, pulled, pulled to the outline. And I think the Dynamo's uh, defenders were so surprised by that, that uh, Rasa just pulled, pulled in, into the uh, box and no one is really marking Grull who makes it 1-0. Uh, and then Rapid was mostly better, but conceded after a free kick, a very poorly defended free kick. Uh, you know, ball is cleared, comes back, and Mosan Orsic um, can make it 1-1. The atmosphere in Vienna was electric and the referee, I think the Ukrainian lady, had their hands full because um, not only are the teams kind of very emotional, but the fans also. I mean, uh, the flares coming from the Dynamo fans, especially Sex, as the second half, uh, it was electric on the, but on the point of tipping over in many, many, many ways. Um, a bit recovered and Hofmann after a good free kick makes it 2-1 for Rapid and then in the second half there was not much happening. Uh, Rapid was kind of sloppy in uh, launching a counter attack with the last pass always going amiss but the big uh, pro that I have to give to them is Dinamo Zagreb did not have a single shot in the second half. And that was a team that I or most probably, probably thought is rather uh, comfortably the second best team in this group. The best team, of course, is West Ham, who, you know, it just before they have to break the deadlock and then within a minute, the open bone, a minute and a few seconds, um, seal an easy win over Genk. And that was that. So, but yeah, uh, overall, I think it was an enjoyable evening. I do enjoy both comp competitions. Uh, it's always nice to see different jerseys all around. So yeah, uh, let me know uh, which games you saw. And if you want to add anything, please do so below. As, as I said, I saw highlights from all the games, but some of the highlights were literally just the goals and not much more. So if you have a different perspective, I would love to hear from you. Um, of course, a little bit more focus on Lusk because that's my favorite team and has to be in the videos. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!